Hello, good day, and welcome all of you to another session of virtual classes of science. Today, we are going to deal with a very important session of kinematics of one dimensional motion particles, in which we will be discussing the various aspects of free fall of a particle under gravity. So, welcome again to the session of free fall under gravity. And we will see few questions based on that which are important for you to practice for your entrance exams. Okay, so like all of you know, I'm going to discuss the free fall in a very short format. What is a free fall of an object? The definition I will conclude into these two statements. If a particle satisfies these two, then I can say that the particle undergoes a free fall. That means its initial velocity should be zero and it experiences an acceleration which is equal to acceleration due to gravity. So for that particle we can say what are the non quantities? Free fall. Let's say it starts from a height h and it falls to earth. So h2 is equal to zero. So immediately I can say that it has got a displacement which is equal to 0 minus h which is equal to minus h. The particle's displacement I can put it as minus h. And I have got u is equal to 0 and a is equal to minus g. There's many factors we know. So for kinematics, what are the other factors which we need to find out? We need to find out two more things for this particle. They are by what velocity the particle will reach the ground? We can say velocity of reach. Velocity of reach. That is could be found by using v square is equal to u square plus 2 a s. So all these derivations you must have done in very detail in the theory session that we have done in our video. So this expression for velocity of reach will be equal to v is equal to root 2 g h. And the other factor which we have to find is second one time of fall. Time of fall. That is the time taken by the particle to reach the ground. We can use say s is equal to u g plus half v t square for that, or I can put h minus x is equal to zero minus half g t square. T can be obtained as root of 2h divided by g. So the time of fall I have got it as what? Root of 2h divided by g. Of course we can use the other equation which is velocity time relation also. As you know that u is in the downward direction, a is also in the downward direction. Say I am going to use a third equation which also will give you the velocity by which the particle reaches the ground. That means v. We can use v is equal to u plus a t and u is 0, a is minus g. That will give you minus g, g which explains v is in the downward direction. That means the velocity of the particle. Obviously that is pointing downwards. Or I can write, say v is also negative. So we can say v is equal to uh, g t for the particle or t can be written as v by g. The time taken by the particle to reach the ground in terms of the final velocity of the particle and the acceleration experienced by the object. All of these we can say that these are the observations that we have done in detail while we were doing the theory session that we have done in the video of free fall of an object, which is meant for concept discussing. Now, I am going to extend this concept into another way. So, like we have seen the particle which is moving down or falling down. Suppose we have or we are assuming that a particle is projected upwards or a particle which is thrown up or this will be used for you to do the problems of bouncing through vertical projection. So, let us assume that the particle has a vertical projection. Or simply you say that a throw in upward direction or a bouncing of upward direction. 
we are assuming that particle is initially projected with a velocity u which is not equal to zero and that reaches to maximum height at which the particle velocity is equal to zero. It experiences a is equal to minus u which is downwards and say the displacement is equal to we know that h is the displacement. So when it is coming into the vertical throw, actually we can say that the, everything is getting reversed because you are seeing the same situation in a different manner. You are looking from bottom to top, that we can say. And this, what is the first requirement we have to find? We have to find the height reached by the particle. What should be, what would be the maximum height reached by the particle? For that, you can use the same equation, which is v square is equal to u square plus 2as, where v is 0, we can say 0, u square is u square, a is negative, that is minus 2g, see h. Rearranging h will be equal to u square by 2g, which is nothing but it's the same form of this one. Squaring and rearranging, you will get this expression for h that's it. Now what else we need to know? We need to know the time taken by the particle to ascend or to move up. Time taken by the particle. Or we will call that one as time of ascending. So if you call this one as time of ascending, you have the freedom to call this one as the time of descending. So time of ascent of the particle. We can use V is equal to U plus A T for that. V is 0. U minus G T rearranging T will be equal to root U by G. Got the expression for what? Time of ascent as well as time of descent and height. So combining these two, suppose you have a problem in which the particle is thrown up and it is coming down. Say if you throw a particle up. and it is falling down. We will call it as the total time taken by the particle to move up and down as we can say time of flight. That is time of flight. That would be equal to nothing but time of ascent plus time of descent. So root of u by g time of descent we got time of ascent we got it as descent we got it as v by g Time of ascent, sorry, there is no square root over here. It is u by g only because we are adding this, there will not be any square root. That you get it as 2u by g. This is the expression for the total time taken by the particle. We have discussed everything for this particle while we were assuming that the air which is there is very uniform, it is not producing any kind of resistance. So in which we got the time of flight is equal to this much, time of ascent is equal to u by g as well as time of descent is also equal to u by g. So when there is no air resistance or when there is no air resistance, we can say time of ascent is equal to time of descent. The time taken by the particle to move up and down can be explained by the concept of free fall very easily. Now, yes. now let us extend the concepts into when there is air resistance or when real condition is considered. Suppose the air resistance is there and it produces a non-zero acceleration A or it produces a non-zero retardation A. What will happen for ascent and descent? Ascending, a particle is ascending. We have a particle thrown with say u velocity, it is moving up with u, g is acting in the downward direction and there is air resistance. Say if there is air resistance, what the air will try to do? You know that a frictional force always acts in the opposite direction. So the force of air, I mean air resistance force will be acting in the downward direction. Hence, that acceleration also will be in the downward direction. So we can say that the net acceleration experience or net retardation experience by the particle will be 
sum of G and A. That is the condition. That means the net retardation increases. What will be the expression? We know that V is equal to U plus AT is the one which we are going to use. This is zero. U minus of G plus A into T since both are negative. These two are in the downward direction. I can take time of ascent as u divided by g plus a comparing to this expression this is u by g this is u plus g plus a g plus a is greater than g so t a in this case I call it as t a dash t a dash will be lesser t a dash will be lesser look at this descending situation particle is descending when this is descending what will be the condition for? that is dropped particle is dropped with u g is acting down what will be the a force will be in the upward direction because the resistance will be in the upward direction a is in the upward direction what will be G double dash? We can say that will be G minus of A. Using the same formula, we can get T D dash will be equal to U divided by G minus A. G minus A is less than G. So T D dash will be greater than T D. Or we can say when air resistance is considered, time of descent will be greater than time of ascent. Descending time will be greater than time of ascent. That is what happens when there is a resistance. We are into the first question based on the free fall and the related concepts. And obviously, this is a problem which is related to the air resistance. Here, what is given is a particle is thrown upwards from ground, it experiences a constant resistive force which can produce a retardation 2 meter per second square. The ratio of time of ascent to time of descent. Given that G is 10 meter per second square, option A is 1 is to 1, option B root 2 by 3, option C 2 by 3, and option D is root of 3 by 2. Okay. So the problem is to find the ratio of time of ascent and time of descent. We know that in ascending and descending the height or the displacement covered by the particle will be the same obviously. So let us take the ascending case when the particle is ascending. We have already found G dash for that will be equal to G plus A because when the particle is moving up acceleration of due to gravity is downwards air resistance also is trying to pull it down so this is the net acceleration of the particle let us put v is equal to u plus a t for this v becomes zero when the particle is at the highest point when it reaches the highest point v is zero g is down and a is also down so zero is equal to u minus of g plus a a to t I can write time of ascent A is equal to U divided by G plus A. Let me put it as equation 1. Let this be covering a distance of S during ascent. So distance covered in ascent is S. I'm writing V square is equal to U square plus 2AS. Here V is 0. U square minus 2 into G plus A into S. So S is nothing but U squared divided by 2 into G plus A. We got the expression for S. Let this be equal to 2. And when it is descending, when the particle is descending, we can put G double dash is equal to say minus of g minus a we know that acceleration due to gravity is downwards and acceleration due to the air resistance is upwards okay so we can write 
dash is equal to minus g plus a or I can put minus of g minus a. In that we can write say the displacement. What is the displacement covered by the part? It is ending means it displays the velocity is zero. It is starting from west and it covers s. So u t plus half a t square if I write minus half g minus a t square. I will put it as capital T so as to distinguish between ascending and descending. And the displacement is obviously negative. Okay. So I can put t is equal to from here. Okay, I got the displacement expression for uh, descending particle also. Okay, so the displacement is also negative, so we can say that this negative and negative can be cancelled. We got both the displacements. I know ascending displacement as this, and the descending displacement as this. And ascending and descending displacements, it is covering the same distance. So they are equal. So what we can do? Let this be equation 3. We can equate 2 and 3. 2 and 3 are the same. Substituting, we'll get u squared 1 by 2 into g plus a is equal to half g minus a t squared. Okay. So we got the expression for what? So this 2 and 2 will get cancelled. Rearrange for t, t, which is the time of descent. t will become, say, g minus a and g plus a is g square minus a square. So u square divided by g square minus a square. Taking the square root, this will be u divided by root of g square minus a square. So we got the expression for time of ascent and we got the expression for time of descent. Now we are coming back to the question. What is the question? Our problem is to get the ratio of time of ascent and time of descent. We got 1 and 4. Take the, let's see the ratio of time of ascent and time of descent. That is Ta is to Tt. Ta is to Tt. That is u divided by g plus a divided by u divided by root of g square minus a square. u and u cancels. Root of u square minus g square. I am taking that one into the numerator. That will become root of g plus a into g minus a divided by g plus a. Rearranging that will become root of g minus a divided by g plus a because one of the square roots will get cancelled. This is the expression for the ratio. We got the value of g as 10. We got the value of a as 2. Substituting, this becomes time of ascent divided by time of descent. This is time of descent is equal to square root of 10 minus 2 divided by 10 plus 2. Root of 10 minus 2 is 8 divided by 10 plus 2 is 12. So, what will be this value? Root of 2 by 3. Look into the option. Which will be the right one? Option B is the right answer for us. A problem composed of a free fall as well as a throw. It is very common in case of free fall questions. See what is given over here is a ball is dropped from a high platform at t equal to zero when experiment is starting. After six seconds, another ball is thrown downwards from the same platform with velocity v. They two meet at t is equal to 18 seconds. Then what is the velocity of the second ball? Options are 75 meter per second, B 55 meter per second, C 40 meter per second, and D 60 meter per second. Let's just visualize the problem. Say there's a platform over here, say at a height of H from the ground. One ball is, say ball A is dropped, that means it has got U equal to zero, it is dropped. 
at t equal to 0 seconds and it travels for t equal to 18 seconds and after 6 seconds from this that means when it counts down 1, 2, 3, 4, 10, 6 seconds and the ball B is thrown downwards with velocity V and that comes to the same point when this covers t equal to 18 seconds that means the second ball must have taken how many seconds? 12 seconds because second ball started 6 seconds later than the first ball so what we can say second ball took 12 seconds and first ball took 18 seconds to travel the same distance so that is the striking point what we can say ball A and ball B has experienced or covered the same displacement so the first ball took time is equal to 18 seconds ball B took time equal to 12 seconds and its initial velocity is 0 its initial velocity is equal to say V we will apply this one into the equation which is position time relation which is S is equal to UT plus half A T square so displacement of A U is 0 I can substitute half G which is that G is equal to 10 into T square 80 square this is the displacement of the first part I mean A what about displacement of B initially that's what V velocity and 12 seconds so V U T becomes V into 12 plus half G 12 square that is the way to solve this problem. Let us see 18 square and uh, 10, 2. 18 square is 18 square is we know that. So this is 18 square 3, 2, 4 times 10 is 3, 2, 4, 0 divided by 2. This is the displacement of the first particle. And about this, this is 12 V plus 144 divided by 2. We can write it as 72 into G is 10, so 720. We know these two are equal, equate them. This is say 1, 6, 2, 0. SA is equal to SB. SA is equal to SB. 1, 6, 2, 0 is equal to 12V plus 7 to 0. 12V is this minus that is 900. V is 900 divided by 12. Nothing. 75 meter per second this is our right answer that constitutes the ideas of free fall and two problems of free fall i don't want to elongate the video into a very long session which already about more than 20 minutes so for you to view it and enjoy it very easily so that your web also supports you i'm concluding the session we will be having one more session on the problems of free fall. Thank you. Thank you for watching.